Long time no see, guys and gals of YouTube. Um, Pubmaster Drex speaking. And uh, this video is basically just going to be a commentary about uh, my absence from making videos and such. And, uh, you know, where I've been, what I've been doing. So, um, a lot of this stuff is going to be a little little difficult to talk about because I don't want to go too far into details and bore you guys to death with it and uh, be prepared to sit there for a little while um, some of this is a little bit long-winded so I do thank you for your patience in advance um, to start off where have I been uh, work is a good one uh, I've been working a lot picking up hours as I come along I work retail so my hours are very erratic I'm trying to move up into a position that can at least give me full time. That way I can pick my days off and uh, pursue other things as well. Uh, I have been looking at other employment because the place I currently do work at I'm not a huge fan of. But uh, it pays bills and that's what is most important right now for me. Um, so to start off, like on top of work, my grandfather got remarried. Uh, which is really weird. It, it just, it's weird saying that sentence that, you know, my grandfather remarried at the age of like 73. Um, and, you know, it, it shook our family up quite a bit because he's not very good at communicating with us. Uh, you know, he just kind of came over for a uh, Sunday dinner. We were watching True Detective. And then he just looks at us, like, on the way out, and he goes, Oh, by the way, I'm getting remarried. To which my mom just said, Oh, okay. And then closed the door. And then it turned into, like, a what-the-fuck kind of moment. Which was kind of hilarious, but it's also extremely far-fetched at the same time. But, uh, you know, with the family shake-up like that, you know, getting a, basically a new grandmother, which is is still fucking weird to say at least in my opinion uh you know it's like we we never met this person and you know we finally got to meet her and she is a fantastic human being i mean she's she's great and uh you know we we've already grown fond of her so that's always a good thing but there's also going to be members there's a repercussion there's uh, members of my family that don't really agree with this and uh, there's certain things that have been transpiring um, amongst my family that uh, it, it's pretty crazy some of it is uh, hilarious I might I, I'll probably just tell you guys what's been going on but um, my uh, you know like the the two people that this impacts the most you know my grandfather getting remarried is my mom and my uncle and uh, fun fact about them they're 15 years and 15 days apart which is kind of crazy like the fact that you know my grandparents waited that long to have another kid is uh, that I don't know that just blows my mind really but uh, which means I'm my uncle uh, he's not much older than I am and he's actually the person that got me into gaming entirely I mean starting off with I, I, used, I was a little kid I'd watch him play Doom and uh, he used to tell me that you know this was that Doom was real and it was happening and uh, I believed him because you know I was like six <laughs> you know I just it, it like I was fucking floored by it you know just like oh my god there's a guy on Mars that is going to hell right now and fighting demons and shit and you know, eventually, I, I he started playing um, what came out. It was uh, it was one of the first Tom Clancy games. It was uh, uh, Rogue Spear, uh, which I think was like the second installment, and um, it was a first-person shooter. And like, this was at the time where you couldn't aim down sights and stuff. Like, if you right-click, you zoomed in a little bit, unless you put a scope on your gun, then you'd zoom in further. But and also, your gun wasn't displayed on the screen on your heads up display it was just a blank screen with a crosshair which I thought was hilarious and uh, it's just impressive to see how far games have come now you know aiming down iron sights and putting red dots on them and all this other shit but you know my my uncle he uh, 
he's the he's the one family member that did not take it very well. Uh, my grandfather getting remarried because it came out of nowhere. Uh, he just like graduated from UCLA um, and started teaching at uh, UC Merced here. Um, that's that's where I'm from, from UC Merced, and um, he's a college professor, and uh, he loves it. He likes the work, you know. And uh, it's it's what he wants to do, and that's totally cool. But um, you know, he's nine years older than I am, and he still lived at my grandfather's old house in the guest house, which was um, you know, it's just kind of like you know, you have an established position and good paying job. You know, you could at least rent a place. You know, I mean, like he lived pretty much on his own when he went to Stanislaus. And, uh, you know, he, he did a pretty good job with that. You know, he found a job. He did, like, uh, I, I can't remember what he did. It was, like, something at Target. I, I can't remember the position name. But he did something at Target, and he went to school, like, full-time. And, you know, he made it work. And I was like, all right, you know, right on, dude. And, um, but it, it's just weird that, you know, he, he didn't move out until recently. And, um, you know, he started just kind of going off on the deep end on certain things and um, you know of course like I, I try to find myself in a moral gray area for stories you know I don't want to side with red team or blue team I don't want to go on the the black side or the white side of things like I I find that gray area you know there's always two sides to the story hear them out um, and and uh, you know he he just went off on the deep end. It just made no sense whatsoever, and uh, it was really difficult because, you know, I didn't. I don't really see my uncle as my uncle. You know, it's not my mom's brother. He's like a big brother to me because we're only nine years apart. That's that's not very far off. And you know, we played video games all the time together, and we went to LAN parties for the love of God and trashed everybody at Quake 3 Arena, Unreal Tournament 2K3 and 2K4, um, you know, played all sorts of, like, other crazy little games here and there, um, you know, I was there when he was one of the first level 60 characters on Blackrock in World of Warcraft, yeah, I used to play World of Warcraft, you can fucking point and laugh at me, but, um, you know, that, that was a long time ago, and, um, shit, that was like 10 years ago, it's crazy to think about. Um, but yeah, it, it's just, um, there's just been a lot going on with that, you know, and, um, you know, there, there's a financial strain there, which I understand completely for, uh, or on my, uh, mom and, and uncle's end, and, uh, my grandfather moved to Bakersfield, uh, with, with his new wife, and, uh, they're looking to get a place back here in, in Merced, where I where I live, and um, the old house, you know, we, we did an estate sale. We sold, you know, all of the possessions inside, and, and we kept some of the family heirlooms and some of the cool stuff that, you know, we can get uh, some money for, and, uh, you know, it helps us out, and it uh, cleans the house out, and then, we, you know, we're just getting ready to sell the house now, and... Um, my, uh, this, this is where it gets kind of weird. Like, this is the most recent thing that happened. Uh, my uncle's old room, he had a bunch of stickers on it. I mean, these stickers are from, like, the 80s and the 90s. And, uh, it's just cool. It's a door riddled in stickers. You know, it's a kid's door. You know, I, I did that in my old house. But I, I lived in for, like, 13 years of my life. And, you know, I put stickers on it. I put posters all over that room. You know, I got posters all over my room now. I've got all sorts of crazy stuff going on here. But he had all these, like, really rad stickers. I mean, there was, like, a Rockwell's Modern Life sticker, a real monster sticker. It was awesome. It was super fucking cool. And, you know, he moved into this new place. He likes his new place. It's not a bad little house. He, he enjoys it. He likes it. I think it's a pretty cool place. Um, you know, he wants something more. You know, he wants... You know, that's what you want when you have money. You want more. Which makes sense, you know, it's like, you know, you work hard, you get paid more, yeah, you can afford more stuff, that's understandable. But, um, you know, this door, he, uh, you know, it, it goes with the house. That's the house's door. It's not just his door, it's the house's door. 
and uh, he there's there was a gentleman that came by the estate sale and you know he wanted to buy the door and he's making an offer on it and we we're like you know yeah we can't really sell the door because it's it goes with the house which makes sense and he was like you know he was cool about it he said okay you know that that's understandable that's okay uh, and then when my uncle heard about this he decided to take action and he took the door uh, he I like took it off the hinges and now it's at his new place and it's just sitting there he took the fucking door and it just floors me that he would do something like this because I've always known him as a very logical and level-headed person but I've never ever heard of anybody doing anything like this which is just pretty asinine um, that pretty much concludes like the whole family thing right now um, I would go into more detail but there's a lot of stuff that just needs to stay behind closed doors and I hope you guys can respect that. Um, I know that a few of you that might hear this, uh, you know, you might have gone through something similar. And just know that you're not alone, and I completely understand. And if you want to keep that in secrecy, do it. And, you know, if you need to talk to somebody about it, my door is open for you. Um, I, I actually have a small list here I'm just kind of reading off of right now. So I'm trying to keep this as organized as possible, but I'm not very good at that. Uh, next up, I got into a car accident on March 15th. Uh, it was a very minor accident. This uh, I was going to uh, the Bayside concert, which fucking ruled, by the way. And um, I was stopping at Costco to get gas because I was uh, I was gonna get gas, go to Sacramento, meet up with some friends, and then we were gonna take my buddy's car because he's got a SUV. And we were gonna go. And see fucking Bayside, Senses Fail, Man Overboard, and Seaway. The show was really, really good. But getting there was a pain in the ass. And the reason why was because I was at Costco trying to get gas. And this uh, guy started backing up. And I couldn't move anywhere because there was a car behind me. I couldn't go forward because if I went forward I'd be blocking off one of the pumps. Uh, he kept backing up. He got about 10 feet away. I honked my horn. He kept backing up and hit my driver's side fender. He bent it, completely fucked up the headlight, uh, and he got out of the car, and it was an older gentleman, and he said, hey, I'm really sorry about that. Pull over here real quick. I'll follow you, get our information, or get each other's you know, insurance information. I was like, you got it. And you know, I, I couldn't get mad at the guy because he admitted fault. And that was something that was really big and cool of him to do, you know. He backed into my car. He wasn't like, oh, what the hell? Oh, what the fuck? Like, his day was ruined. You know, I was on a tight schedule. I was trying to get the fuck out of here so I could go to San Francisco, or sorry, Sacramento, then to San Francisco to the show and, um, you know, have a good time. Uh, he gave me his information, made a claim with his insurance. Uh, my insurance didn't cover anything. You know, I was like, it's his fault. He admitted it. Call them. Put the claim in, you know, they called him up, whatever. Uh, went through, and everything went easy peasy. And I finally, you know, um, got the check, and I went to a place to uh, get an estimate to repair my vehicle. Um, so I'm pretty stoked about that. And uh, overall, like, my first car accident was a good experience. And that is something that not many people can say. So, take that, fuckers. Uh, next up on my list is paintball. Um, I have been playing paintball since I was 14 years old. Uh, to put that in perspective, I turned 25 this year. Uh, my 14th birthday, I remember this vividly. Uh, I wanted to go and play laser tag, and my dad looked me dead in the eye and said, Fuck you, faggot, we're playing paintball. He didn't actually say that, but it, it felt that way. Uh, and he... <clears throat> booked a party like I went with five other people. I went with my dad my dad's best friend at the time uh, His best friend's son who's a good friend of mine and uh, my late friend Brian and I went and my mom went along and it was weird because my mom and dad just divorced and uh, That was kind of a weird time, you know, it's like seeing them together and they, they they actually do better as friends than they do as partners and uh, That's something I can respect 
I would get into that, but I, I don't feel like sitting here and talking about divorce. That's that's just that's a somber thing, you know. But uh, you know, we're playing paintball, and uh, you know, the birthday money. I mean, I got hooked instantly, and I got birthday money. You know, I was like, man, I'm gonna go buy a paintball gun. I'm gonna start playing this, and it's gonna be super rad. And uh, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, at first, I was really intimidated because the first thing I see when I step out of the, my dad's truck was uh, this guy. He's just decked out in. Uh, at the time, it was like the high-end dye gear, uh, dye paintball, dye precision, and uh, it was like all blue. He had like the mask, which the dye i threes make you look like the Master Chief from Halo. I shit you not. Go look them up on Google Images. Especially the green ones. You, you straight up look like the Master Chief. It's fucking cool. But, um, I digress. He, you know, he's got, like, all this matching equipment. He's got, like, this high-end gun that's just, you know, shooting, like, fucking... At the time, to me, it was, like, fully automatic, but it wasn't. You know, because these paintball guns have double triggers, and they're just wicked fast. And I'm over here with the rental gun that doesn't shoot straight, and I'm still having, like the time of my life it was just an amazing experience uh and it was just it, it was super super fun and uh it got me hooked you know i saved up money i bought my first electro pneumatic gun uh from smart parts i bought a smart parts epiphany um my buddy shane in high school he um he had a bunch of high-end guns like from back in the day he had an angel a4 fly uh 2005 intimidator uh, the alias intimidator. That was that was a damn good gun. And uh, he had a 2006 Mac Dev Cyborg. And uh, this new field opened up that wasn't very far from us. He drove. Uh, my buddy DJ and I didn't. DJ also played. He bought like a, he bought the Invert Mini, which was the coin toss gun because like you know you screw the air tank in, it was either gonna work or it wasn't. So he just took a gamble with it. But uh, he wound up letting me use the 06 Cyborg for a while, and then my birthday came along, and he just gave it to me. And uh, I, I mean, I was just, I, I, I had no words. Like, I was speechless. I'm still kind of speechless about it, because, uh, you know, he's like, it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. And I was like, holy shit, this is really cool. And uh, it was one of the uh, New Jersey Rangers uh, Cyborgs. It was uh, basically... Uh, black gray and white ERDL like pattern camouflage with red accent parts so uh, what I mean by red accent parts like there's eye covers the trigger uh, clamping feed neck like those parts are red instead of just the uh, you know the ERDL pattern and uh, there was only like 10 of those made and uh, I actually wound up getting in touch with um, when the 07 cyborg came out they uh, the New Jersey Rangers got digital versions of them so they're digi camo and red and I got in touch with one of them and I basically traded the 06 and uh, about $500 cash for the 07 model and um, I've had that gun ever since like uh, late 2006 I believe and um, unfortunately I had to send that one in because after regular maintenance uh, putting so much paint through that gun I had to send it in because some parts started failing and uh, I sent that gun in last year, uh, and it hasn't come back yet. And uh, I'm extremely disappointed in Mac Dev. And uh, I, God forbid, if they fucking charge me any any amount of money for that, I, I will be fucking livid. But um, that's neither here nor there. Uh, the current thing about paintball is that I actually just dropped a thousand six hundred dollars on a brand new gun. I wound up purchasing a DLX Lux 2.0 with an OLED board and uh, I've been saving up for this gun for months while just holding funds to fix my car and uh, you know I finally got to that point and I just it feels like a monkey off my back but at the same time I want to play in paintball tournaments again I want to play in two mans three mans five man X ball and if they ever do seven mans again uh, I'll probably just stay away from those because that's just a pain in the ass to deal with. But uh, I do want to get a. Uh, I do want to get this. There's these cameras called the Ions, and they're um, small uh, cylinder shaped cameras. And I want to mount one to the paintball barrel and start making paintball videos because I think that would be rad. 
and put those on my channel because I mean I'm I'm super passionate about paintball. I mean this is like one of the few things that I love and I can actually say that I love like from the bottom of my heart. You know I I'm super just passionate about it. I I can't stop playing. It's every time you pick up a gun and go out and play, you just feel that spark, that fire inside. Just it it just goes and it's just amazing. Uh, I do feel that way about some gaming, but only with like Battlefield, sometimes Call of Duty, uh, like Black Ops 2, I was actually stoked to play Black Ops 2, so hope, hoping that Lord Vonderhaar makes Black Ops 3 without this exo shit, good map control, good spawn system, and oh my fucking god, weapon balance, like fuck you Sledgehammer Games. I can go pick up a BAL-27, like anything, with any attachment, and that gun is just straight up Jesus Christ mode. It's so hard to die with the Val 27, I swear to god. Um, let's see here, uh, next up on the list is uh, Battlefield Hardline. Um, yes, I am coming back with Battlefield Hardline videos. I actually have one made up right now for the L85. Uh, the study session is recorded, I just need gameplay for it. Which, uh, I will take anybody's gameplay for uh, the study session videos, if you can record it and get it to me in uh, in uh, MP4, I believe is the format I use, with at least 720p, uh, 30 frames, I will use your video and you will get full credit for it. Um, and before you ask, no, I don't get paid to do YouTube. God, sweet baby Jesus, no, I don't. I am extremely far off from that, and that's that's something I I do need to address. This. YouTube thing is a hobby. I got into it because my friends do it. Uh, the Schwanz 27, Skag 3, I've been watching a lot of stuff by Azazel, uh, Carlos Valdosta, Apocalypse, like all these guys that I watch on YouTube, you know, they, some of them I have talked to, some of them I have played with, uh, and some of them I know extremely well, uh, being Fag 3. Ha! <laughs> fucking got him! Um, I had to do that. I had to at least do it. He talks shit on Destiny. I have to talk shit on him at least once or twice in a, in a video. So, hope you can at least appreciate that. Um, but yeah, just expect more content sometime soon. Uh, again, this thank you, thank you so much for you know sitting here for like I don't know fucking twenty minutes or something. Uh, you know, hearing me out like where I've been, what's been going on. And uh, just just expect some stuff soon. Uh, I do. I have been hitting hardline pretty hard. Um, I just need to start recording the gameplay. You know, I'm still trying to get used to it. It is a much faster paced game. Uh, and uh, the fucking rep system in that game is bullshit. I, God, I fucking hate it. But that's okay. Um, I can see him going on about the negatives for God knows how long. But there's so many positives to just make up for it. So um, again. One last time, thank you so much for, you know, sitting through this if you did. Uh, if you didn't skip through it, that's totally cool. Um, but yeah, expect some videos soon, guys. Pubmaster, out.